Today we are making carnivore pasta noodles and there is no pork rinds in them. I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you're new here, welcome. I hope you check out some of my other videos. And for those of you returning, welcome back. I hope you enjoy today's video. So about two years ago uh, on YouTube, I made a video. It was uh, not a long video. It was uh, keto pasta noodles. Um, it was such a popular recipe on my blog at the time that I thought, okay, I have to do it on YouTube. And it became super popular on YouTube as well. The only thing is, to this very day, I still get comments and questions asking if, you know, what can be substituted for pork rinds? I can't do pork rinds um, for whatever reason, you know, religious reasons, allergy, histamines. There's a multitude of reasons, um, you know, that people don't do pork. So, so that's great. Um, I did make some other pasta noodles as well that are also on YouTube without pork. But the other day I was, uh, you know, playing around with my meat chips, my carnivore crisps, and you can use homemade meat chips for this as well. And I thought, well, what if I just made the exact same recipe as that one and substituted all the ingredients one for one, except I make it with chicken or beef or whatever. And I did that. So I have these noodles in my fridge that I've been using this week for soup and they turned out great. Now this one happens to be, I, I did a combination. I made a combination of uh, chicken breast and liver chips. And so that's why they look kind of, uh, you know, that multi-colored look to them. Um, the soup, they're great in soup. I, I just take out a little handful, mix it with some leftover beef. Uh, we'll show you, show you up on the screen what that looks like. It's delicious, fast and easy when you've got the noodles made. So today I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm going to make another batch. Um, I am going to use the carnivore crisps. I'm going to use only chicken today because I want a lighter color. And I'm just going to throw these back here. But you can totally go with the, the dark ones. And if you cannot get carnivore crisps where you are, um, I'm going to link you below to how I make my own meat chips. They're easy to make. You don't, I mean, you can do it in a dehydrator with a meat slicer, but then I have another video where I do it a completely different way. So I'm going to link both those below. So however you get your meat chips, either conveniently or make them yourself, this will work. So let's start. Um, I am going to just go over quickly what's in the recipe. Now you can print out my recipe card. It's called Keto Carnivore Pasta Noodles. I will link it below. I'm making this exact recipe except for where it says three tablespoons of finely ground pork rinds, we're going to use three tablespoons of finely ground chicken breast. So you can print this off for yourself. So let's go over the ingredients. There's three large eggs. There is a tablespoon of Parmesan. Now um, on the recipe it says dry Parmesan. I, I don't have any. I'm going to use this. This works equally well. Yeah, and there is four tablespoons of the brick type cream cheese. It comes like this. And I think I probably have a, a good four tablespoons here, but I'll measure it. And uh, some salt. Now the original recipe doesn't call for salt. Uh, pork rinds are extremely salty, at least the ones I can get here. When I made the noodles the other day, I put in a pinch of salt and there still wasn't enough salt. So the carnivore crisps have way less salt than pork rinds do. Um, and then also whatever ones that you make for yourself could be the same. So uh, let's get started. Uh, 
for blending the pasta batter, I'm just using a personal size blender. I'm making just one small amount because I still have noodles. Uh, I, I People like this so much that they always tell me they make a double batch. So, you know, try it once, a single batch. And if you like it, then you can go forward and make double batches. So I'm going to put my three eggs in here into my blender got my three eggs. I'm going to weigh this out. Um, so four tablespoons is the same as uh, two ounces. Oh, that's 2.6. So I'm going to just take a little bit off and I'll give it to you in grams too. I just want to get to my two ounces first. Perfect. 57 grams is the same as two ounces. So I'm actually going to break it up a little bit here so that it's, uh, it's a small blender. It's not a Vitamix. I'll make it easier to blend. Okay, and the tablespoon of cheese. If you have the dry, you can use it or this. And if you don't have Parmesan, I'm betting that probably whatever cheese you have will work. I'm using Redmond salt. And I'm putting in two pinches this time. Okay, so to grind these up, I am going to use this rotary cheese grater. Okay, so this is the rotary grater that uh, a subscriber purchased for me and sent to me as a gift. That was Snuggle Puss. Thank you very much again. Um, now I, you know, was happy to get it because I was using it for frozen butter and it also works great for grated cheese. So uh, I've also discovered that grating pork rinds in it, they come out really nice and fine. And I've always been using this particular one with the big holes. But when I did that the other day, these came out too chunky. So I switched to this one with the little holes. This is for grinding nuts and spices and it worked perfectly. So that's what I'm going to use today. There we go. Okay, so I don't know exactly how many of these I'm going to need. Um, so I'll probably measure it a little bit out as I go. Okay, so I've stuffed this thing full with chicken breast crisps and um, I'm going to grind them, measure out the three tablespoons and weigh it for those of you who like to do things by weight. If you do use this, put a big bowl here because they do tend to kind of shoot out. A little bowl doesn't quite catch them all. Teddy does take offense to this little contraption. Oh yes, they sense things are gonna fall here. Knock yourself out, you guys. I think we, we might, by the time I shake out this thing, we might have our three tablespoons, so I'm gonna to give that a try and see how that goes because some of them get caught up inside here. Okay, so three tablespoons is about an ounce, 28 grams. And the oven is ready. I'm not quite ready. Uh, I have set it to 350. And we can put this back. Sorry guys, now you have to wait till they're done. Now we're going to add, I was going to say pork rinds. <laughs> we're going to add our chicken breast, crumbs. Okay, you want to have a nice smooth mixture, which it looks like I have here. Uh, I just want to say before we leave the grinding part, that if you don't have one of these, 
Uh, the other thing that works well is these little mini food choppers. They're like a uh, like a mini food processor, or if you have a big food processor, you could you know do a whole bunch at a time. Uh, or you could do a blender, like a Vitamix. Um, put them in a plastic bag and use the roller. I do have a video on all the different ways you can crush pork rinds like that. So I'll link that below because it will work for this as well. Here is the sheet that I'm going to use. Uh, I am using, uh, uh, what is this, 11 by 17? Oh, it doesn't say, but which is the same as this one, which says 12 by 17. I use a 12 by 17. 11 by 17 is gonna you know, work well also. Like I wouldn't worry about an inch. Okay, so I am going to just pour it. Now, because these uh, carnivore crisps or meat chips that you're going to use are a little heavier than pork rinds, you can see it sort of is all, um, like some of it settled to the bottom and, and is all lumpy. But what we're gonna do is just use the spatula to spread it out a bit and make, make it evenly distributed as we can. Or pour it in before it has a chance to settle. <laughs> I was busy doing something else for a moment there. Now, if you don't have a silicone liner, I get this question a lot, you can use parchment paper. It does work. It gets, it gets a little wet and wrinkly, but it will work. Okay, and then I just kind of let it uh, roll around like this. You can use an angled spatula. It's not a thick mixture. Um, the version of the same recipe on my website, the non-carnivore version, uses psyllium husks, and so those, those kind of gel up and harden. I mean, and you could also put gelatin in here. I know some people might do that. So if it gels up too much, the angled spatula works really well to smooth it. Okay, so I just, I have it about as even as it's going to go, I think. There's a little lump of cream cheese here. Okay, so this is going to go in the oven uh, for uh, eight to 10 minutes. So definitely check it at eight minutes because all of our ovens are different. You want to take it out once it start. you can see the edges start to curl up. That's when you know it's ready. I just want to get a bit more down at that end there. Okay, so I am going to pop it in the oven. I've set my timer for eight minutes and we'll see you when we pull it out of the oven. Okay, we had a big problem. Uh, I don't know if you can see this over here. It, like, and I've noticed this problem the last couple of times I've used that mat. Everything was sticking and I couldn't get it off. So I'm using one of my other mats. And uh, I gotta, I'll have to figure this out another time. But I think this is the same mat I used in the original video. And I'm just gonna go with it. Because it doesn't have a lip on it like that one, I'm just spreading it with my angled spatula to the margins. So I'm going to put this back in the oven for 10 minutes. And I'm hoping that this one comes out the way I was expecting it to. We will see. So we had a little bit of a kitchen disaster, but we're making a lemonade out of lemons. I managed to scrape my noodle sheets off into pieces and I'm going to make lasagna out of this. I don't know yet what is going to go in the lasagna because I was unprepared, but I just kind of want to show you that, you know, even when it looks bad, 
no need to throw it away. All is not lost. You just need to piece together. See, I've got the bottom of my lasagna noodles. I'll put something in the middle. I might even get two layers, uh, sorry, three layers all together. I'm not sure. But that's not what this video is about. I'm gonna do this afterwards. Just move it over here for now. Drops a few crumbs there. Let's get over to our pasta noodles. This looks a little better. You're probably, um, you know, these cracks, I get them sometimes, but it doesn't really matter because once you cut it up into noodles, then it's completely unnoticeable. So what I find I have to do is kind of, you know, put a flat spatula or even, even something like this that I use underneath here and just kind of get the edges off because the edges are usually crispy and and so they're a little bit stuck to the pan um, but on this other one the whole thing was stuck like there was no getting that off so um, I don't know if the pan has degraded or what has happened there um, so this one seems to be much better and it's going to come off once I pry the edges loose. So. Okay. I think maybe next time I'm gonna like try it in the, on the middle rack or something. So basically you want the sheet like this. Nice full sheet. Is that your piece, Teddy? There you go. Good dog. Now, there's many different ways you can cut the noodles. And uh, one, the easiest is probably with a sharp knife. This is what I always used to do. Uh, you can, you know, just roll it up like a jelly roll like this. And just basically cut like that. The advantage is that you can make them super thin if you want, or you can go a little bit thicker. So, you know, there's, there's the differences in size. Um, recently, I did a video where I was reviewing different noodle cutters, and uh, I kind of use this one most of the time. Uh, I have an attachment for my KitchenAid where you can just feed the sheet through and it makes them up almost as thin as spaghetti. So that one's quite nice. And uh, there's also those manual ones that you can get where you feed the sheets through. That works as well. I tend to go for this one because I can just grab it out of the drawer and, uh, and just cut. Um, so you have to press really hard because what happens is, I mean, you have to then kind of pull the noodles apart a bit. Um, but I, I find it still works well enough if you press hard enough that uh, this one is probably the easiest one for me. Uh, some people use a pizza cutter. Uh, I cannot roll it straight enough for that to be any good for me, but that's just me. If you're good at that, then by all means, use the pizza cutter. Um, yeah, so whatever way, there are many different ways to, you know, skin a cat, so they say. And uh, this one, this one works pretty good. So. As far as the fastest way though, I kind of think it might be slicing. If you want them straight and pretty, use this. If you don't care if they're all over the place, different sizes, the knife works. Okay, so these noodles, as far as storing them, I just keep them in the fridge. That one looks a little too thick. I just keep them in the fridge in that container you saw and then I just take them out you know by the handful as I need them. Uh, you can freeze them. They freeze well and so uh, that's not a problem. The other thing is that these hold up really well in soup. I use them in soup uh, all the time. They hold up well under a sauce. They, uh, they're just really versatile and can be used for a lot of different things. 
They are carnivore. There's only animal products other than the salt, uh, which you can leave out if you like. And uh, what else can I tell you about them? Um, Oh, I also uh, have made tuna casserole with this. Like they bake well with other things, like uh, say tuna and or chicken. I've made enchilada wraps. Actually, that's maybe not a bad idea for our broken ones over there. But I think lasagna might be easier. Um, so yeah, so there's uh, there's all kinds of different things. They are already cooked, so you don't have to. Um, you know, boil them or anything. You just throw them in your soup at the end. You just warm them slightly before you put sauce on them or bake them. Um, like you just throw them in with your other ingredients, bake them in a casserole. I'm probably going to do a few different things this week and uh, maybe I'll do some shorts with what, you know, short videos with uh, some of the things that I make with these noodles. So um, this one here with the black specks in it. Those black specks are liver. It was a good way to use up those liver meat chips that I had. Uh, I kind of like the looks of this one with just the chicken in it. Oh, and one more thing I want to tell you. Um, if you are going to use your, you know, for those of you that have the rotary grater, uh, Use the meat chips or carnivore crisps that are the lower fat ones, like the pork loin, the beef round, um, chicken breast, those ones. If you use the high fat ones, like brisket, I'm thinking, the bison, you know, the ones that have a lot of fat in them, it gets all clogged up in your little thing here. Um, like it just it just sticks into the little holes and then you've got to you got to get your hand in there to get them all out and there it, it's it just doesn't work as well so if you want to grind those ones up to try them for something I would use maybe the blender or your uh, food processor something like that not not this um, so just a, an extra tip so I hope you enjoy these noodles to me they taste just like the ones with the pork rinds because you can't taste the pork rinds in the pork rind ones that's another question that I used to get a lot can you taste the pork rinds no nope. can you taste the chicken mm -mm. they just taste the same to me all of them I don't know um, so I think these will be enjoyed by those who cannot do pork so give it a try and have fun with it try all kinds of different types of meat okay we'll see you guys on the next video Um, and the other thing that I want to mention is, oh, never mind, scratch that sentence.